Hey everyone, welcome back to another Barn Find TT restoration episode. So glad you could make it. In this video, what we'll be looking at is repairing the rear glass window, which tends to delaminate or peel away from the Roadster fabric rooftop. Now this is probably an issue that uh, probably most Mark 1 Audi TT Roadster owners will face at some point along their ownership journey and that is the rear drop top fabric peeling away from the glass. So you can see up the top here in the top right corner and the right hand side the glass has started to peel away from the roof and that needs to be rectified obviously in order for the cabin to be sealed. So we'll look at fixing that up and how to best do it. So first of all, we'll jump inside just so you can see what other components to that rear glass are that you've got to be careful of when you're doing this job. So now we're in the cabin. I've just rolled the driver's seat forward there so we can see what's going on. The previous owner had popped this little sheet here to attempt to stop that uh, glass dropping any further, but what we'll do is just we'll take that off and you can clearly see that is peeling away from the rest of the glass. Now some parts to be really mindful of and I think it's already been broken here are the windscreen heating element wires which help to defrost your rear windscreen. So well, let me just set my exposure properly so you can see it here. Sorry guys, it's a bit of a tricky lighting situation here, but I've managed to figure it out. So you can see in the corner, there's this little like plug, black plug, that you need to be careful of. And it's already been damaged on this Roadster, but that's easily fixed. All that needs to happen for the repair to be viable is the connections need to be joined back up again where you can see the wires being severed. Um, on the other side, I'll flick over to that side once I've sorted out the light and you can see pretty much the same thing's been done. So it's good that the wire is still there to be able to reconnect to the contact point on the glass that you see in the middle of the frame. Just quickly showing you guys this one, you can see how badly delaminated the glass is up the top here, which is fine, we can fix that. Uh, but let's have a look at this side's little connection. Uh, I'll just push the glass back so you can see again, there's the connection there and uh, dangling down is the point where it should be connected to that little contact there on the right hand side. And then that's how the current flows through to demist your rear glass. You're in luck if the uh, little connection point is still there because all you've got to do is solder it back on once you've finished your repair. So first things first okay. is cleaning up, cleaning up all this gunk that's there and has failed. All right, so that's the first thing we've got to do. So first things first, what we'll look at are the major pieces of equipment that you'll need to be able to do the repair on your Audi TT Mark I Roadster glass that's peeling off from the fabric roof. So this is one of the key pieces of equipment here, the suction clamp little things for repair of the Roadster glass. So this can be done on any Roadster really. And that's the main piece of equipment that, that will help to suction the glass up onto the fabric and hold it there. Then obviously you'll want something like this 3M window weld stuff to replace the glue that's failed. And then some razor blades. I've got some razor blades here to clean off all of the old residue. So we've got a nice clean surface to start off with. I also highly recommend this 3M single step primer. You'll also want some sticky goo remover stuff then you'll be able to start getting into removing all of the old adhesive with a razor blade. Now I'm using this little handle here at the beginning, but I found that it was just easier to handle with taking the actual razor blade out and just holding onto the razor blade itself to remove the old adhesive. 
So just work your way around the whole perimeter of where the glass has peeled away from the fabric, being careful not to cut into where it's still stuck together or into the Roadster rooftop. You might also find that there's some gunk left on the fabric up on the top. So just make sure you get rid of that as best as you can as well. The main aim here is to have as clean a surfaces as possible on the glass and on the fabric. You can see that I am being a little bit firm here with my pressure and that's to get rid of all of the really stuck down stuff that's on the glass. Just make sure you don't lean and put all your body weight onto the glass otherwise you risk removing the rest of it from the fabric. The next step is to use your orange goo remover stuff to then really get rid of the remainder of the adhesive on the edge of the glass. So just go ahead and use a sponge that has a rough surface on one side. That should be enough abrasiveness to get rid of that glue without scratching the glass. All right, so now I've removed all that gooey stuff from the edge of the glass. This is the kind of finish that you want. You can see that it's quite shiny now all along the glass edge up until the fabric. So that's what you want before you start to apply the glue. Now, there are many ways that I've seen that people tackle this next bit and that's raising the glass up high enough so that you can join the glass to the fabric, such as using cushions or beach balls or wood or even more wood or a combination of all of the above. But this is my solution where I've just shoved a nice little toolbox under the middle of the glass and you can see that raises the glass up high enough so it almost touches the top of the roadster fabric. Then I go in with the suction cups which are specifically made for a convertible repair and use those to then join the fabric over to the glass. And this is a really nice elegant solution. You don't have to stuff around too much with other things. Now, if you've never seen how these work before, I'll zoom in really close just so you can see how the wing nut works and how it starts to bring the glass towards the fabric as you tighten up the wing nut. So you can see here that you do have to make sure the layers go glass, fabric, and then the plastic clamp, and you can move it in position uh, once you've got the suction cup actuated and move the clamp up and down. So the best version that I can recommend is this sort of red one where you can see it's slotted where the wing nut goes through. Then you just tighten the wing nut all the way down and it has a nice gripping effect that brings the glass towards the edge of the fabric. The next step is to tape up where the edge of the old glue used to be. And this is so that you can apply some primer that the glue can stick onto. And this is the 3M single step primer that you'd want to apply with a brush or something similar before you apply the sealant or the glue. Now that 3M single step primer stuff really, really smells. So I try to keep the bottle open as little as I could because it really got up my nose and in my eyes. Now this is the tricky part where you want to be really careful as you use the caulking gun to squeeze the sealant out of the tube and onto the glass. It is really thick using this 3M stuff so I was squeezing really really hard to get the bead out and I was making sure that bead was nice and thick and continuous along the edge of where I'd laid that tape down. And I wouldn't worry so much about being too neat here as when you put the clamps down, it's okay to have some of the excess goo squeeze out because you can cut it later on. So once you're happy with your application of the 3M window weld, it's time to use those clamps as we saw before. This time it's for real and it'll actually stick a little bit easier now that you've got some adhesive under the fabric. So go ahead and use your clamps and uh, go around and clamp as many as you need in order to get a good bond. 
I hope you're enjoying this video everyone. If so, please remember to like and subscribe, press that notification bell to get the latest updates on the Audi TT Mark 1 barn find project. Now on this part, I've just moved to the inside of the cabin to make sure I stick the overlapping fabric onto the top of the convertible roof to make sure that it's held up nice and tight. Now you can adjust the suction cups as you need to. As you can see here, I'm just fiddling with this last one. So don't be afraid to remove them and start again. All right guys, so basically I had to do a couple of readjustments. I think the uh, glue was starting to set for me at about where that uh, blue clamp is and I needed to reapply and then re readjust the placement of the clamps but that's pretty much it now it's all just a bit of a waiting game I'll let this set overnight it's pretty warm here right now as you can see I dropped some sweat on the windscreen yummy um, but tomorrow I'll be able to take the clamps off and then give the drop top a bit of a test run. And this is just the view from the inside where I've used some tape to hold up the extra flap of fabric that attaches to the top of the Roadster roof. Cool, so now this is the next day and the suction cups are ready to be removed. There's no need to go ahead and start undoing the wing nuts one by one, just pop them off by lifting the suction cup up off the glass. Once they're all off, go ahead and remove all of the tape that you had on there before. Your next step is to then grab your razor blade again and go ahead and neaten up all of the excess glue that has squeezed out from the edge of the fabric. So you can see here that all I'm doing is using the edge of the blade to cut through to the glass and then you use the glass to slide in under to then get rid of the excess if you want to be really picky, you can go ahead and really neaten up that dark edge so that you don't see any of that single step primer after the glue. All right, so now that's all cleaned up, it's time to give it all a test run. So I've just got some, oh, and it's leaking. That's not good. All right, so it looks like there's more work to be done because the test run just failed. Yep, so you can clearly see by doing this little screwdriver test there's a big gap in the glue. So I'm just opening it up again so that I can add in some extra glue to seal it all back up properly. And this time around I'm going to go in with an extra thick layer and really push it into the edges with that screwdriver just to make sure I've got a good seal. And I'm just using that little screwdriver just to push it into the edges of where it's already sealed up and also to the other side where it looks like it's grabbed a hold of nice and tight. It's just this corner bit which tends to be kind of tricky. Okay, so one last time with the clamp. So you already know how this works. No need to detail this again. And then we wait overnight. Once that's all dried up, it's time to clean up that little corner and give it another test run. So this time around, I'm going to get it really, really wet and get that spray gun on there and really test it out. So let's see how it works this time. Okay, fingers crossed. There's heaps of water going on there and that looks solid now. So that's good. Happy days. Final test is to release the convertible roof and bring it all the way down and then bring it all the way back up again. Now, you know that this car isn't running. I don't have any of the battery uh, hooked up at the moment. So this is why I'm manually engaging and disengaging the roof. But 
It's just to test out that the, that the glass has attached and won't detach any time soon. So here we go, final test and bringing the glass all the way back up, this time fully engaging the latch and locking it back up. As you remember, I did this repair with the fabric a little bit loose. Now let's not forget about this little guy, the demister connections. So what I've done is just remove them from the car and I'm going to use a scalpel, something quite sharp to remove this initial part of the sheath where the connection has severed. Once you've cut deep enough and all the way around, just pull the sheath off. The next part is to then attach some copper wire. Make sure it's quite a thick gauge and you want to twist this together and then bash it down with the end of something soft and flat so it has a sort of tapered out shape to it. Next thing you want to solder that onto the end of the connection. Now you'll see why the reason I needed to extend this out is when I go to fit it onto the car. Where it's actually been severed, the length then is too short to reach the contact point. So a little bit of an extension to that connection really helps to give you enough length to solder it back on. You can see here I haven't soldered it back onto the center of the contact and that's because you can't really get any attachment there. So the solder sticks to either the top or the bottom, then you can pop the plastic trim back on. All right, everyone, so thanks for tuning in. So that's how you repair the rear glass window. Should it be peeling on your Audi TT Mark I Roadster? So repairing the convertible can really help to save you money rather than replacing the whole thing, which of course you can do, but the parts can be hard to find. And of course it can be quite expensive to do that. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and to stay in touch with the Audi TT barn find restoration project. Remember to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell until next time. See you then. Bye.